everyone, and this is Kavita from Turn the Page. Today we have with Hushi Saraswati Rajagopalan. She's one of India's leading Vienna, Vienna artists. Um, welcome, ma'am. Namaste. Namaste. Ma'am, um, you started your journey at the age of 12. And um, was it that it was pre decided? that you were going to be taking um, Vena as a profession mm -hmm. or it just came along or how did it happen? No, my learning Vena itself was an accident because <laughs> uh, I was written off for music uh, really? because I used to be very bad. Okay. Uh, my mother used to think that I was not at all good in music so there was no question of uh, learning Vena. She started vocal with me. I used to be very bad in singing but it just... Uh, happened one day that you know Veena came into my hands and my musical journey started and I've never looked back. So you were actually on the path of learning classical music and that's when this came in? Yeah because okay. uh, normally you know we are initiated into classical music that right. is the base for whatever kind of music that you want to do. So I started with classical music vocal but later on became Veena. So was it something that you were always interested in or you found your path and you said, okay, this is what's leading me and... Um, See, as I said, it was by accident. Exactly. That's so true. nothing was pre-planned or anything. It just happened that one day I started learning uh, Veena and my journey has started from <laughs> then and it's going on. So ma'am, um, you have conducted a lot of uh, workshops in New York and Netherlands at the College of Liberal Arts. So what were these uh, workshops comprising of? These were mainly for the students of music okay. who are learning uh, Western classical, different instruments, ethnomusical, I mean musicology. So to introduce them to what Indian music is. Okay. The various aspects, the, theori the theoretical part, some of the theory, then kind of say history and the commonality, the differences, similarities. These were the things that I would discuss with them. And somehow, you know, they have liked all those because, you know, such interactions, you know, enriches everybody. And uh, these, these workshops are primarily for how long? And, uh, it depends uh, sometimes, you know, two, three sessions, right. like, uh, you know, both to play and also to speak and tell them certain things. So maybe to, it depends on what kind of, uh, you know, uh, workshops they want. So based on that, I design my program and do okay. it. I'm sure it must have been a very enriching experience. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Both for me also because, you know, when I meet new, different types of students who are totally new, there are many who are little familiar with music, but uh, they are uh, not aware of, you know, veena as an instrument. So for them also, it's a lot of learning. So how many students mm. do you find interested? in learning the Vienna because classical music, you know, I mean, if you really look at the new millennial um, kids around, um, their interest levels are very different. So do you still see people coming and um, finding this as a, you know, a passion to follow for? Yes, there are some kids who really want to learn because when I Sometimes when the parents bring their children to me for learning, first question I ask them is, are you forcing them or are they really interested to learn music? Okay. If they are interested in learning music, are they really serious about an instrument? Mm -hmm. And that to Veena, because it's going to be very tough. Sure. And uh, so they are very positive. No, no, no. I want <laughs> to learn only Veena. And so that's how, you know, I select my students, you know, knowing that they are really very sincere and keen to learn because I all tell them beforehand all the difficult things. I don't talk to them about the easy things because music in itself, any art for that matter is very difficult and one needs to put in a lot of hard work. If you want to show some, you know, progress. 
So if they are willing to do that, whether mm -hmm. they can take out that much time mm -hmm. with their other activities. So only when they say, yes, we are ready for it, I say, okay, come. Okay. And now you've also played with Yoko Nishi, who's one of the world's biggest Koto player. And how was that experience? And how did that come along? And I believe you played as a duet. Yeah. And where did, um, how did that actually happen? No, this was in Ahmedabad. Okay. There was this uh, conference which takes place every two years, Vibrant Gujarat. Mm, how so nice. it was a part of that, and that year I think probably Japan was one of the main, uh, you know, participant or uh, something like that. Okay. So this, uh, along with the conference, there were many cultural programs. So they wanted to bring somebody from there for music, for a musical performance. So I was asked because uh, to play Veena, somehow I found that Japanese people, they love Veena very much. Really? Yes. And, and why uh, is that so? Is yeah, I will, it's a big story. I'll first Please. let me, yeah, I will tell you this first. <laughs> and um, so they said that I'm going to, I have to do a duet program, a uh, Jugal Bandi kind of a program with this Japanese Koto player. We had never seen each other. So both of us met literally on the stage. So I saw her bringing a huge, you know, uh, a parcel, like it was one a, a big, huge furniture, like a thing which she had to open, dismantle, then reassemble everything. And uh, she started tuning the instrument and she didn't know English. I didn't know Japanese, okay. though she had her interpreter. But then, you know, since we were already on the stage, she was setting up her instrument. I was ready with my instrument and uh, as she was tuning the instrument, I could make out the notes and what kind of a raga she would be playing on that. Okay. So I just said, are you going to play something like this? Oh, she was so damn thrilled <laughs> that, you know, only through I, you know, like uh, body language, we, you know, communicated with each other and uh, without speaking. No. I just played this. You want to play something yeah, like please. this, yeah. Can so, you play what you played with her? Yeah, she was tuning her instrument to something like this. I just love the look of this. I mean, just look at it. It's so beautiful. This is one of the, you know, it's a very important raga in Indian music. It's called Kalyani in the Carnatic side. Okay. And it's called Yaman. Yaman? So now, yeah. You and what does it symbolize? It symbolizes many things. It's a very romantic raga. Oh. It, uh, you know, depicts Shingara, beauty, oh. and all those. And um, so she was tuning her instrument to these notes. So the moment I said something like this, you want to play? She was very happy. Then since she was a guest, I allowed her to start. She started, then I followed. And you know, mm -hmm. that's how we played some things. Then from there she moved on to something else. Uh, typically the Chinese or Eastern music, you know, there are this pentatonic scales. Mm. So she started playing that and she left at some point. So from there I caught on. Okay. So it was another very important uh, you know, scale, which is also sure. very uh, popular in Indian music. So this is a very old raga, you know, this is called Revati in Carnatic music. In Hindustani music, they call it Bhairagi Bhairagi. Bhairag. So, like our Veda music, you know, you must have heard. Wow. So, something like this. So, like, you know, even, uh, you know, as strangers, <laughs> it looked that we knew each other. So wow. there was a connect very quickly, the moment, you know, we sat together and she plucked her strings, I started, it looked as if, you know, we have really practiced for, you know, a few days it's and then, you know, really that's so hum. beautiful to see how music, you know, binds people. Yeah, exactly. You know, across uh, continents, it's amazing. And um, so what are the origins and dynamics mm. of Vienna? What is it that? is the history and what is the story and what is it that you would want to tell us because you've been playing for yeah. so many years you know everybody has their own way of depicting their you know passion yeah. and how would you tell us about this see if i have to talk about the origin and dynamics it's a very huge subject 
uh, we need hours and hours to discuss that. Sure, but sure. I will definitely answer your question. See, origin of Veena, as you know, it's one of the oldest instruments. Uh, Veena is associated with divinity. The goddess Saraswati herself has played the Veena. So it gets the divinity part from there. Then, you know, our scriptures, Vedas. So, uh, you know... Uh,